eagle hyphen server dot example dot com and the IP address is going to be the in this instance the IP address of this particular server because it's also uh, a web server and again this IP address is 172.16.361 We'll go ahead and add the record. Okay. We now have a DNS record. Okay. And then the last component of this instruction says uh, enable HTTP services. So we go to the HTTP component and we'll turn it on. All right, on R2 central router, the network interface card is missing for the serial connection. Yeah, that's something we discovered earlier. It says add a WIC 2T in the right-hand slot. Okay. Let's go to R2, click it. Let's go to the physical tab. So we're going to add a car to this slot. And actually, we're going to add this car, WIC2T. But I know we can't add it without turning off the power. So power down the device. Drag the WIC2T to the right slot. Power on the device. Okay, so let's connect a serial DCE cable to R1, ISP S000, and the other end to R2. All right, let's go to cables, connections, and it says that we want to connect the DCE end to R1. See, this is the serial DCE, so we'll click it, click R1, and we're going to make the connection to S000, and we'll send the other end to S000 of R2. We have green lights. That's a good sign. Now, since R1 is the DCE, we have to ensure that the clock rate is set, and it, it is set at 64,000, so that's good. Just remember that the DCE end of the connection will always have the clock value. All right, let's do a connectivity test across this link. Okay, we'll go into uh, R1. And basically, we want to get to this particular prompt. We want to get back to the number sign without anything else between the P and the number sign. To do that, just type END. You may have to press enter twice. Okay, now we're going to ping R2. What is the IP address of R2? Okay, R2 serial is 172.16.397. But it's probably not going to work. Let's 
it's not working because we didn't assign an IP address to S000. And the appropriate IP address for S2, well, R2, S000, again, it's 172. 16.3.97 and the appropriate subnet mask is here. Okay. okay, let's go back to R1 and try that ping again. Okay, this time we have success. All right, here it says uh, under task three, we need to go ahead and configure the servers, the routers, and PCs. We've already done that. Okay, it says part of the router configuration has already been done. All you must do is configure the static routes and the interfaces via Google. We can, we've configured the interfaces, but we did not configure the static routes, and you shouldn't have to worry about that. Use the file that's posted. I have already uh, enabled dynamic routing, so we don't need the uh, static routes, and that's something that uh, you don't have to concentrate on at this time. If you use the file that's posted, and configure the uh, addresses on the appropriate interfaces, and everything should work just fine. Okay, we'll go on to task four. All right, it says uh, use ping, trace, web traffic, and the inspect tool. Trace packet flow and simulation mode with HTTP DNS. TCP, UDP, and ICMP viewable. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and switch to simulation mode. We'll go to edit filters to make sure we have HTTP, well, TCP, UDP. Yeah, they were specified. DNS, okay, DNS is checked. ICMP, checked. Okay, so we're good to go. And we'll take a look at the inspect tool, too. And by the way, here's the inspect tool. Click it. And you can uh, click a device you want to inspect. And here we can look at the ARC table to see the map of IP address to MAC address. You can look at the uh, port status summary table. We see the IP address of the device, default gateway, also the subnet mask and slash notation. Okay, I click R2. Get to look at the routing table. See R2 knows about two networks, the directly connected network. which is here. And it knows about a slash 26 network that it learned via RIP. Okay, we can look at the ARP table. It doesn't look like it's learned 
Any uh, MAC addresses? And also notice that there are two red lights. Let's take a look at why that's so. So I'll, I click the select tool. I'm going to select R2, see what's going on. Let's look at F00. Okay, that interface isn't on. And also, looks like we don't have an IP address. Okay, let's uh, assign the appropriate IP address. Okay, for F00, R2. Let's see. F00 of R2. I know we assigned the IP address earlier, but uh, for some reason, when you power down a device in Packet Tracer and remove or insert um, a network card, Packet Tracer loses IP addresses. Okay, the appropriate subnet mask is here. Okay. At this moment, I, I can't ping the default gateway from a PC because of this amber light. To get the light to go green, I need to go back to real time mode. Generally, the amber light takes about uh, 20, 30, 50 seconds to go away. That's because the switch is running something known as spanning tree protocol, and we'll discuss that more in uh, NET 225. All right, I'm going to ping from PC1B to the default gateway just to ensure we have connectivity. Okay, all right, we have connectivity. And you're probably wondering why we got the time out there. That's because devices that are on the same network will communicate via the layer two address, that's the MAC address. And PC1B did not have the MAC address of the default gateway before um, the ping process timed out. And we call the, the process of a device gathering the MAC address that belongs to a particular IP address, ARP, that's Address Resolution Protocol. All right, now let's uh, use the inspect tool again to look at uh, R2's ARC table. Okay, we see that R2 has the MAC address of a device, this particular IP address. What device is that? Hmm, let's look. Oh, that's PC1B, the PC that uh, we use to send a ping to R2. So in order for R2 to respond to PC1B, it needed uh, um, 1B's MAC address, and it automatically uh, made the association and placed the associated